Welcome to a tutorial on factoring polynomials presented by the Regent University Math Tutoring Lab. There are four key aspects to factoring polynomials. First, we need to define a few key terms. Then, we need to learn the general formula for factoring polynomials. Next, we want to review a few special cases that could make factoring easier if we recognize them early in the process. And finally, we will go through the steps for checking our factoring to make sure that we did it correctly. First, we need to define a few key terms that will help us understand the process of factoring. A quadratic expression is any algebraic expression where the leading variable is a square. While it is possible to factor higher order polynomials, we will only be factoring those in quadratic form. An example of a quadratic is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Here, a factor is a linear binomial expression that when multiplied with another linear binomial expression produces a quadratic expression. A linear binomial expression is a two-term algebraic expression where the leading variable is raised to the first power. An example of a linear binomial expression is x plus 1. This is also a factor of the quadratic above. An irreducible polynomial is an algebraic expression that cannot be broken down into smaller factors. The irreducible factors we will be dealing with are linear binomial expressions. The factor x plus 1 is irreducible because it can't be factored any further. In order to factor a variety of quadratic expressions, we need to follow the general formula. We start by arranging our expression in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Our example, x squared plus 3x plus 2, is arranged this way. Our factors will appear as two linear terms being multiplied. The first factor will be the first factor of ax squared added to the first factor of c. The second factor will be the second factor of ax squared added to the second factor of c. The factors of our quadratic above are the x plus 2 times x plus 1 here. In order to find the first term of each of our binomials, we need to find two factors that make the first term of our quadratic ax squared when multiplied. Continuing our example, x times x equals x squared. In order to find the last term of each of our binomials, we need to find two factors that make the last term of our quadratic, which is c, when multiplied. 1 times 2 equals 2, which is c in our example. At the same time that we complete these steps, we also need to make sure that our middle term is the sum of the two following things. The first term of the first binomial needs to be multiplied by the second term of the second binomial, and the second term of the first binomial needs to be multiplied by the first term of the second binomial. In our example, x times 1 added to x times 2 is equal to 3x, which is our middle term. Once we have the terms of our binomials, we need to find the signs of our binomial factors. We can do this by looking at the signs of the original quadratic and the terms we just found. If all three terms in our quadratic are positive, then both signs in our binomials are also positive. When factoring x squared plus 2x plus 1, we know that both factors will be positive because the quadratic is positive. If the middle term of our quadratic is negative, but the last term is positive, then both signs from our binomial are negative. When factoring x squared minus 2x plus 1, we know that both signs in our factors will be negative because the middle term of our quadratic is negative, while the last term is positive. If our quadratic's middle and last terms are both negative, then the larger factors that make up the middle term are negative, and the smaller factors are positive. In the example x squared minus x minus 2, our outside factors of x times 2 are bigger than our inside factors of x times 1, so the negative goes in front of the 2. If our quadratic's middle term is positive, but the last term is negative, then the larger factors that make up the middle term are positive, and the smaller factors are negative. In the example x squared plus x minus 2, our negative sign needs to go with our smaller factor, of x times 1, so it goes in front of the 1 in parentheses. Now let's use the general formula to complete the following problem. We start with the quadratic expression 3x squared 
minus 5x, minus 12. First, we want to set up the signs we will have for our binomials. We know that one will be positive and the other will be negative because our quadratic's middle and last terms are both negative. Next, we need to factor our a and c, which are 3 and 12 in this problem. 3 factors to 1 times 3, and 12 can factor to 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. We need to find two pairs of factors, one from each number, because we have four slots to fill. We only have one pair of factors for 3, so we know we will have a 3 as a coefficient of 1x, and a 1 as the coefficient of the other x. In order to choose the correct pair of factors for 12, we need to see which pair gives us a 5 when multiplied with our factors of 3. We should always start with our closest factors and work out. This means we need to multiply 1 and 3 by 4 and 3. If we multiply 3 by 3, we get 9. And if we multiply 4 and 1, we get 4. 9 and 4 have a difference of 5, so we know these are going to be our factors. Now we need to decide where our factors go in our binomials. In order to get a negative 5 to match our middle term, we need our larger factor of 9 to be negative and our smaller factor, 4, to be positive. This gives us the binomial factors 3x plus 4 times x minus 3. There are several special cases that allow us to use shortcuts when factoring. When in doubt whether a quadratic is a special case, we can always use the general formula because that works for all cases. Two of the most prevalent cases are a difference of two squares and perfect squares. A difference of two squares will always have the form a squared minus b squared. Our coefficient and variable in our two terms will need to be a square for this to work. This case factors to a plus b times a minus b. The quadratic x squared minus 1 factors to x plus 1 times x minus 1 because the square root of x squared is x and the square root of 1 is 1. Our second special case has two forms. A perfect square can be positive or negative. When all our signs are positive, we have a squared plus 2a times b plus b squared. If we have any coefficients in our first or last terms, they also need to be squares here. This factors to a plus b quantity squared. The perfect square of x squared plus 2x plus 1 factors to two factors of x plus 1, or the factor x plus 1 squared. If we have a perfect square with a negative middle term, then the only difference is that the sign in our answer is negative instead of positive. This comes from following our sign rules. The perfect square of x squared minus 2x plus 1 factors to two factors of x minus 1, or the factor x minus 1 squared. Now let's do an example of one of these special cases. We want to factor the expression 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Notice that this only works because both 4 and 9 are squares. First, we want to rewrite this expression like the formula. This gives us 2 squared times x squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 times x plus 3 squared. Now we need to note that only the middle sign is negative, which means our binomial factors will also be negative. Let's go ahead and set them up. We know these factors need to be identical if we are going to represent them as a square at the end. Following the formula, we plug a factor of 2x into our first term and 3 into our second term. Now we can represent these binomials as a single binomial squared, just like our formula. Now that we know how to factor different quadratic expressions, we need to go over how to make sure we got the right answer. We check by multiplying our factors together. They should give us our original quadratic when we're done. Let's check our factoring from the last example. The easiest way to multiply our binomial factors correctly is to use the FOIL method. The acronym FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. We start by multiplying the first term in each factor. For our example, the first term 2x and 2x multiply to get 4x squared. Next, we multiply our outer factor, which are the first term of our first binomial and the second term in our second binomial. For our example, our outer factors of 2x and negative 3 multiply to negative 6x. Then, we multiply our inner factors, which are the second term in our first binomial and the first term in our second binomial. In our example, 
our inner factors are the same, so we will get another negative 6x. Finally, we multiply the last term in each factor. For our example, we need to multiply negative 3 times negative 3, which gives us 9. After we do this, we should be able to add the result of our inner and outer factors because they're like terms. This gives us the original quadratic expression. If we add the 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9 that we got from foiling, we get back our original quadratic expression of 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now let's practice checking the problem we factored earlier. We start with the binomial factors we found earlier. We have 3x plus 4 times x minus 3. We start by multiplying the first term of each factor. This is 3x times x, which gives us 3x squared. Next, we multiply our outer terms. This gives us 3x times negative 3, which equals negative 9x. Now we multiply our inner terms of 4 and x. This gives us a 4x. Finally, we multiply our last terms of 4 and negative 3. This produces a negative 12. In total, we have 3x squared minus 9x plus 4x minus 12. We know our 9x is negative because the minus sign in our binomial pair in front of our factor of 3 was negative. This is also the same reason that our last term of 12 is also negative. In order to get our original quadratic, we need to add our negative 9x and positive 4x, which we can do because they're like terms. This gives us a 3x squared minus 5x minus 12 as our final answer. Thank you for learning more about factoring polynomials and for making the most of your Regent experience.